Well, I just finished this little house, and I think I'll take a break and go play some Parkour Spiral. You know, I'll instead spend 150 hours building the entirety of Parkour Spiral in my hardcore world. That way, I don't need to spend five seconds logging into a different one. <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> no, Totem, I'm not crazy. All right, for real though, I've wanted to build this in my world for like a year now, and I am so stoked to finally do it. So thank you, Heliki, for designing the map. This is gonna take a lot of planning to make. We have all of these steps, which begin with the placement of where it's gonna go. The issue, however, is that this map is about 300 blocks tall from top to bottom. If I were to just place it right on the ground, the top would be cut off because it would reach world height. So that means I need to create a 2.2 million block hole beneath it. These concrete blocks are going to be the outline of the hole we're going to dig. Okay, now that we have an outline, to do anything here, all of this water needs to go. Now we just need to place some gravel beneath this concrete and make a wall. And now I gotta come in here and make some trenches. And I found that making the trenches five blocks wide was perfect for the next step of placing sponges. And then every time I would run out of sponges, I would quickly dry them in the nether. I have cleared the water. Anyways, now this entire mountain needs to be cleared because the TNT machines we're gonna be using in a moment have to have flat land to work. Let's go get some beacons to get the haste effect. Beacons, perfect. Now I'm at my raid farm to craft some emerald blocks. Someone on stream told me to try using a mod called item scroller. It's crafting the blocks so fast. Uh, yeah, that's definitely enough blocks for all the beacons. Okay, wanna see a cool trick? Watch this, beacons, beacons. Beacons, beacons. Whoa, how did that beacon magically appear there? First, I think we should start with the dirt. Actually, I have a better idea. I'm gonna need some TNT. Okay, now I need a bow to shoot the TNT. And bruh, how did I manage to grab literally the one mending bow instead of any of these infinity bows? Now the boom booms. And that's all the dirt. Now I'm gonna mine the stone. That should be all the land flattened. And now it's time to remove the main portion. All 2.2 million blocks. Obviously the best way to remove this is to use TNT. However, when the TNT explodes, it leaves the walls looking pretty ugly. So to fix that, we're gonna use a special trick that involves water. But to fully explain it, I need to travel to the right spot. doing down here <laughs> but do you see this water water this took so long to find just like in real life when you drop something into a stream and it does nothing minecraft is the same and by lining the walls of our square trench with water we can keep the tnt doing nothing and make sure this place stays awesome why did i have to come all the way out here to explain that so to make the water trenches, we're gonna need to mine all of the sides down to y equals minus 40. That's gonna take a while. So to speed up the process, I wanna get some more beacons in. And so I mined and I mined and I mined until finally something really weird happened. I wish Deep Slate would instantly mine. Whoa, wait, why am I falling so slowly? Yeah, I definitely didn't spend 10 minutes leaving the hole, going to the storage, finding ingredients, and then brewing slow falling potions just for one joke. No, no way would I ever do that. And after an hour and a half, I had finished the first of the four trenches. Dude, this looks so cool. Ouch. The second side is pretty much the same deal but as you can see my pick is kind of low so let's go and quickly repair it i then spent the next several hours mining out the second third and fourth trenches and there we go that's the first step of this project done 
and while working I ended up collecting quite a bit of deep slate and diamonds, both of which are going to be needed later in this project. I guess now the next step to make these walls completely flat is to flood water down the trenches, probably something like this. Oh wait, the water can't be doing that. Um, what about every other block? Okay, yeah, that somehow fixed the flooding. Great, so I think this is actually a good place to take a break from working on the hole. The reason being is I'm about to hit 9,000 days on the world, and I think I'd like to blow up the hole on the 9,000 day stream. So in the meantime, before we get there, let's actually start collecting the items for the entire parkour spiral. Oh my gosh, what the heck is this list of items? 170,000 blocks? Like, are you kidding me? That's kind of crazy, but I guess we gotta just start. So first up, 40 shulkers of stone. And wait a minute, remember from the last maps video? I literally mined 350,000 blocks by hand and saved all of the stone. Next up, we have 22,000 deep slate. And I actually did save like 10 shulkers of deep slate from the trenches I just hand mined. But that's still not anywhere near enough. Wait a minute, does cobbled deep slate cook into normal deep slate? How did I not know this? This is good. You know why? Well, two episodes ago, I coincidentally made a massive tunnel bore that blows up cobbled deep slate, which I can then collect quickly. Oh baby, we got our diamonds too. Someone recently beat the overall most diamonds ever collected in hardcore, and I think it might be kind of cool to get that record back someday. Ouch, ouch, ouch. There we go, that should be all of the deep slate we need. Now we can take this deep slate to the super smelter. And the deep slate is checked off. I'm looking at this next one and we are gonna need about 11 shulkers of skulk blocks. Future one by here, this man in the past was an idiot. He literally made a new diamond hoe using two diamonds and precious levels. From there, this doofus went to an ancient city and realized fortune doesn't even pick up skulk. Huh? Why isn't it working? That's not even the worst of it. Remember how I literally made a video of raiding 100 ancient cities? Well, as it turns out, I collected over 400 diamond hoes, which means I didn't even need to make that new one. I sometimes wonder how past me can be so unintelligent. The next item on the list is pretty easy. Yup, it's some sand. Then some ice. Now about four shulkers of jungle leaves. Why are these parrots here? Oh my gosh! I remember taming these parrots like 8,000 days ago when I first started my world. You guys know you're like 22 years old. Then we need some grass. And some dirt. Finally, some terracotta from the Badlands biome. And there we go. These are the main items collected, and I'm actually looking at the day count, and we're gonna pause here with collecting the items, because I'm about to stream to 9,000 days. That means it's time to get back to work on blowing up the hole. I know it doesn't look like much, but these are all the items we need to make the TNT machines. So let's quickly build them. Um, and then by breaking this block, the machine should start. Okay. Yeah. And with my type of luck, I think it's best if I just watch these machines work from far away. How about we build two more of these machines to help speed up the process? There we are. Hold up. This is not good. This TNT is not going to work if any of these liquids are here. So... Okay, the problem has worsened. That's a lot of lava. Someone did suggest that I could use scaffolding to fill in the lava, but honestly, I think gravel will be overall quicker because I already have <coughs> a lot. Man, this project is so fire. Oh man, the magnitude of this lava pool. 
I'm sorry, it's been a long day. As I cleared the lava, I found some diamonds, fell in a few times, and ate like 5,000 pork chops. Anyways, while I was working, someone on stream suggested a method of removing lava that seemed too good to be true. Okay, so for this trick, we need to go to the iron farm. And then with all of this iron, I would like to make a bucket load of, um, buckets. Now by using these buckets, what the heck? Why have I never used this method before? With my new method of removing lava in place, I spent the next couple of hours bombing the entire perimeter out. Well, that's pretty much it. Although it looks like not all of the blocks were quite removed, so... Perfect, that is one side done, second side cleared, third, and this fourth side, I'm gonna manually use TNT to explode. Pew. This place looks pretty cool, even though that's only halfway. We now need to set up TNT bombing machines once more, but just lower down to finish clearing the hole. Hey, look, first diamonds on the lower part. So as the hours flew by, the machines cleared more and more land until finally the entire area was down to Y equals minus 40. So yeah, I technically don't need to clear any of this stuff away because it is beneath where we actually need to clear, but I kind of feel like it would look a lot cooler if I did, so... This is not risky at all. I just need to clear the blocks around the edge and then I am done. Wait, actually, I would kind of like to put a floor in here. Let me quickly do that. 13,000 blocks later, the floor is in. Holy, the hole is wholly complete. That was cringe. And just like that, I had finished the phase of building parkour spiral. What I didn't know was that the next phase was gonna be much, much worse. Because now I needed to collect over 500 different types of items, which totaled to over 170,000 blocks. Well, we already collected a few items earlier, so instead of doing the large amount of items, why don't I start on the smallest amount and work my way up. I don't think I've actually ever made a dark oak fence before. Same with beds. If you didn't know, I refuse to sleep in my world, so crafting these feels kind of weird. Next up, we have tall grass and large ferns. Ah, I hate to use these because they're so dang hard to find. You can only ever get them in village chests, and even that isn't guaranteed. It looks like we now need some dead brain coral fans, which means I need to take a trip to the reef. And yeah, that should be enough. Skulk catalysts. Conveniently, we can just get these from the ancient city from earlier. <laughs> yes, annoying totem. That's cause to get views on YouTube, you have to fight wardens. Oh, there it is. All right, you aren't so scary, are you? Nice. Well, I'm gonna keep collecting the items on the list. It appears that I need some ferns. And it wouldn't be a Wumba video if I didn't build a farm. Thanks Rayworks for this fern farm design. Yup, I made a fern farm. Literally a farm for ferns. I cannot express how many items I had to collect. Even along the way, I found some super strange things. What the heck? First of all, these two monuments are within range of each other to make a double guardian farm. But secondly, why are they in the land like this? Now I need some sponges and wet sponges. That's super weird. Now some lily pads. 
three stacks of diamond blocks. Wait, that's 27 stacks of diamonds. Are you kidding me? What about the diamonds we collected from earlier? Is that gonna be enough? I guess the only way to find out is to mine them. Diamonds and slime. Slimes and diamonds, diamonds and slimes. Oh shoot, that was not enough diamonds. Do I have more in the storage? Yes, let's go. And now for all of these items. Some snow is next. I do have a farm for this. What if I convert the snow layers into blocks by placing them? Oh my gosh, why is that so satisfying? Finally, I have been collecting items for three days now and I'm about 90% finished. First of all, we do have to get a bunch of jungle logs. Editing Wumba, you're gonna hate me, but could you please do that fast editing thingy? Now I need a bunch of grass. And then about 40 shulkers of lava. And this final item, you will never be able to guess. Two verdant frog lights. Verdant. Am I saying that right? So to get these frog lights, we're gonna need to build a farm. I decided to stream this process because I have literally never done anything with frogs on 1.19, and I heavily relied on chat to help me. Okay, we have all the items for the farm. To actually build it, we need to find a basalt deltas biome on the nether ceiling. Oh, this place isn't gonna work because there are other blocks near, so let's go find a different one. Yeah, this basalt delta should work. Now to build the farm. And I think we just need three iron golems. Nope, he got out. Once more. That should be it for the farm. However, now we need to get a bunch of frogs into here. So let's first go to a mangrove swamp and find some. Essentially, there are three different types of frogs, the white, the green, and the pink one. To get all of these types of frogs, you first need to breed frogs. And then once the tadpole eggs hatch, pick them up in a bucket and move them to specific biomes. Bro, you be drifting. Now that we got some tadpoles and frogs, let's go back through the portal. No, zombie, no you don't. Follow me, guys. Okay, don't go back through, please. Come on, and there you go. Oh, yes! Look, we're already getting a few frog lights. We got two of the colors, and now to get the green one, we gotta go back to a snowy biome and then place the tadpoles here. I think feeding the tadpoles slime like this is the equivalent of force-feeding steroids. Goodness, Minecraft, where are your ethics? Let's go! New achievement. Frogs through the portal and into the farm. Okay, here we are. And look at them eating the slimes. And yeah, I think it's working. There we go, our two verdant frog lights. Hold up, these are the final items on the list. I'm done collecting! Yup, just like that, I had successfully finished phase three of the project. Now I would have to move on to the hardest part of the entire process, building it. So first of all guys, I think we should move all of these shulkers to the hole we dug. Hopefully while we're building, having these sorted will make the process a little easier. I suppose it's time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, men and women, grandpas and grandmas, great grandpas and So let's begin with the first couple of blocks. Looks like we have some fire that goes on the soul sand. And honestly, this is gonna be pretty simple overall, but just time consuming because I need to keep going back to get more blocks. Haha, <laughs> time for the two verdant frog lights. I spent like two hours getting those, but honestly, so worth it. Yo, man, do you know what that is? That is a skeleton trap. I think if I get close to it, yup! Okay, come on, you guys need to die. Oops, I killed one. But yeah, that's fine. I guess now we have three skeleton horses in here. If you guys have any names for these, comment them down below and I'll make sure to name them. Back to it then.
I've just realized how cool it is to fly down here. Like if I spawned in this cave, I would not realize all of this is man-made. And now this is really the best part because it's only deep slate, which means it's gonna be faster. Wait a minute though. This absolute giga chat of a person named Jay Hill suggested that I use a speed beacon. That is gonna save me so much time. And just like that, we are finished with the entire lower part of Parkour Spiral. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this took three days to do. I can only imagine how much time the upper section is gonna take, but it's gonna be so worth it. Imagine just playing Parkour Spiral whenever you want on your hardcore world. Time for the first ring of blocks. Oh man, look at how much lava needs to go here. Actually, that's something I never thought of. What if I mess up and fall into the lava? And we got some wheat here. Does this count as making a farm? Because then I can say I made three farms in this video. We're now at the point where it's kind of absurd to keep flying all the way down there to get the shulkers and go back up. So to fix this, let's make a platform up top and move the shulkers there. Holy freak, why are there so many phantoms? Yeah, this was pretty much my life for the next 50 hours. Placing blocks, getting more blocks, and killing phantoms. Oh shoot, cause it's raining here right now and I'm pretty high up. Snow is actually covering the map. And no, 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 why are you freezing? I mean, we could place torches to melt all the snow or, okay, I got it. How about a massive glass roof above the build? And actually that's perfect. If it's glass, then we shouldn't really see it, which means the spiral still looks good. But to get all the glass for the roof, we're first gonna need some sand. So, and then I gotta cook all the sand. Then just like that, we have about 13,000 blocks of glass. The way I'm gonna place these is actually really clever. So I made a blueprint for the glass layer just like this. Then I can come up top and yeah, so then I'll just have to come in here and fill all of these in. And I am done. I would not know that was even there if I wasn't looking for it. Well then, I should come in here and continue building. Wait, what is this? So I guess on the real parkour spiral map, there's a secret room with this sign in it. I'll tell you how I found it. I'm literally building this entire thing on my hardcore world. I bet no one has ever said that before. Building the first half of parkour spiral wasn't too difficult until I got to the coral level. So guys, I seem to have a bit of a dilemma. Basically, I need to place coral, but the issue is is I can't place the coral until I have water because otherwise it will dry out. And the tricky thing is I can't place water until I have coral because it needs support. Hmm. Maybe I could place the coral and then quickly switch over to the water. And yeah, the coral doesn't dry out. I guess I'm gonna have to repeat this even though it's gonna take a really long time. Well, there we are. I have finished the coral. That was pretty painful, but the worst of it is over. So now let's finish this build. In total, I spent about 50 hours building all the way to the top. As tough and as draining as it was, my goal for this world is to prove to anyone watching that you should never let something hard be the reason you quit. The last thing we need to do are place the trees on top. So without further ado, let's finish this. Oops, I almost forgot the most important part, the diamonds. Oh man, this kinda hurts to place, but no cheating. I must build all of Parkour Spiral or none of it at all. Oh, that's right, we also need an elytra at the top. Perfect. With the placement of the elytra, I had proved to myself that I could put in the hard work, the time and the dedication to finish phase four. There was just one final part and then the project would be done. First of all, we do need to get rid of this platform here. Also this beacon. And you've probably been wondering what I'm gonna do here to make this hole look better. Well, it starts with terraforming some dirt on top. Okay, this looks pretty cool, but the thing is those corners are still kinda bad. How about I smooth them out? Now to flood the water in, I have to place a netherrack platform here to make the water flow properly. 
Every single stinking episode, I destroy an entire ecosystem in my world. But finally, with these trees, I break that streak and I contribute my share to hashtag team trees. Oh, also, two final things for the spiral. On the real map, whenever you hit a pressure plate, there's a sound that plays. So what I want to do is I want to put some note blocks underneath the pressure plates to make the same sound. How does that sound? Actually, not gonna lie, that's pretty cool. The other thing is that this level on the real map, you float up by standing on the diamond block. Obviously, I can't do that on the real world because that would be cheating. So instead, if I were to get a shulker right here, he would give me the levitation effect and that would be the next best thing. I think getting a shulker over here might be easier than you'd think. So first, if I place a dirt path, Yeah, right over there we have a shulker farm. So we could probably just place some rails and then get one into a minecart to move it back. Now, buddy, please take my regen so you don't die. And then a furnace minecart. And there he goes. Let's go. What the heck? I've never had an experience that easy with moving a shulker. Seriously, that took me like 20 minutes. Now, the big question is, does it work? Um, yes, I'm floating. Wait, I'm floating a little too long. Okay, but honestly, that's all right. It's just cool that it works. That was the last thing. Let's go. Actually, one but you're not. You guys see, parkour spiral is known for two major things. The parkour and how fast you can do the parkour. Whenever you play a game of parkour spiral, there's a timer on the right hand side of the screen. This timer is always nice to have because you can see your improvements as you get faster and faster times. Now the tricky thing is I can't just add a timer into the game because that would require commands. I kind of spent the next five hours researching, collecting items, and building a fully functioning stopwatch timer on my hardcore world. This stopwatch even works to the 20th of a second. If you press this pressure plate at the bottom of the spiral, the timer starts, and then it ends when you hit the top pressure plate. Of course, we also have two reset buttons, one at the top and the other at the bottom. I must give credit where it's due, so thank you Crafty Masterman and Purplers for the design of this stopwatch. I've included a link to each of their channels in the description. There is one, one final, final, final thing I want to do. You know the entire ancient city we built earlier? I figured that it would be the perfect place to store all of my enchanted golden apples. And with these apples being put here, I have officially finished all of Parkour Spiral. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing so when I make any new content, you don't miss out.